Hello, everyone. My name is Giselle Foss, and I will be discussing the idea of folate supplementation and how it relates to the length of telomeres and how shortening of telomeres can eventually cause an age-related pathology. Just for some background, um, an age-related pathology is defined as something like a cancer, um, a cardiovascular disease, something like that, just to build up over time based on cells going wrong in their mitotic division. So for this study, the nutrient of interest being evaluated for this institutional review board is folate, which is also known as B9. So I guess the most important question right now is what is folate? So folate is so important in the body, this being because it is a coenzyme in over 200 biochemical processes. Um, the most important of those biochem biochemical processes being methylation. And just some brief background, methylation is adding um, methyl groups to DNA in order to regulate cell division, which is everything. Every cell in our body divides all the time. Um, just some additional things folate does is produces neurotransmitters. It helps with cell turnover and repair, um, membrane function, cell membrane function, mitochondrial and energy production, as well as some immune function. Okay, so from a normal American diet, where can folate be ingested? So based on research, folate can be found in green leafy vegetables, fruits, uh, legumes, beans, and some grains. Um, based on the National Health Institution's regulations, the foods with the highest amount of natural folate in them are spinach, asparagus, liver, and Brussels sprouts um, on the slide that you're looking at. I just provided some basic measurements to give you a... Um, relative quantity to relate the amount of folate per serving in. And these are, again, based on the standards of the National Institute of Health. Um, another thing that is very relevant when it comes to folate in the American diet is in January of 1998, um, the USDA decided to enrich wheat products such as cereals and breads with folic acid. Um, and they did that by adding 140 um, micrograms of folic acid per 100 grams of the wheat product. And this did significantly increase the um, levels of folic acid within Americans. And just a little side note that folic acid is absorbed in the jejunum of the small intestine. So if a person is not getting enough folate from their diet, which most Americans do because of the fortification process that the USDA did in 1998, um, they can supplement with vitamins. So um, through research, it is found that folate can be derived from various multivitamins, B complexes, prenatal vitamins are huge. Um, and there are supplements that are just strictly folate. The thing with supplements, though, is that if you are recommending them or looking for supplements for yourself, you want to make sure they're of good quality and have the nutrients in them that will be absorbed by your body because a lot of vitamin brands do not contain the form of the vitamin that your body needs to ingest. Um, and just some basic statistics, the National Institute of Health recommends 400 to 800 micrograms of folate for adults and 200 to 400 micrograms of folate for children, and that's daily. So again, this is just a breakdown of the RDA by gender and age group. Um, I just wanted to make it crystal clear that the standards of the National Institute of Health are from ages 4 to 18. Men should ingest about 400 micrograms. Um, women, same. 19 and plus is 400 for men and women. Um, the only difference is with pregnant women in both age groups, it should be 600 micrograms per day. And this is because you have to count for the additional blood circulating through the body with the fetus. So this one fact I found extremely interesting through the research that I had evaluated. Um, the National Institute of Health claims that only 85% of supplemental folate is bioavailable when it is taken with food. Um, through the same research, the National Institute of Health also found that 100% of folate is bioavailable when it's taken without food. So just to briefly summarize this, if you take a folate supplement while you're eating, it is less likely to be fully ingested than if you were taking it on an empty stomach. So a folate deficiency is actually 
un an uncommon thing here in America. And again, that's because of the fortification process that took place in 1998. Um, however, it is possible for a person to have a folate deficiency, and that is diagnosed via the cobalamin serum levels. So cobalamin is also B12. So usually the levels have to be greater than 221. Um, and also it has to have just basic low serum folate levels when pulling blood serum labs. Some signs and symptoms of a folate deficiency are fatigue, irritability, diarrhea, poor growth, tender tongue, tongue ulceration, skin changes, and changes in fingernail pigmentation. The one tricky thing about diagnosing a folate deficiency is that a lot of these symptoms coincide with the symptoms of those of a, another nutrient deficiency. So you have to really, really rule out everything else in order to be sure it's a folate deficiency. Okay, so if you do have a folate deficiency, or there is a folate deficiency present, um, and it is not treated by supplementing with additional folate, it can eventually lead to megaloblastic anemia, um, as well as high homocysteine blood levels, which is not ideal, and we will discuss that further on in this video. Um, as far as toxicity from taking too much folate goes, there is no known data of toxicity of a healthy individual. Um, the research that was found basically stated that folate is known as a non-toxic drug for humans as long as there's no medical complications. Of course, people should be recommended to consult their uh, primary care physicians before starting a new multivitamin just in case there is a weird reaction with a drug. So. Getting deeper into the topic of what is being researched, what are telomeres? So telomeres are repetitive DNA sequences associated with a protein complex called shelterin that shield exposed ends of telomeric DNA from damage. So basically telomeres are located on the ends of your DNA, and with each mitotic division of your cells, the telomere gets shorter. And through research, it has been found that as these telomeres shorten with cell division, an individual is more likely to obtain a age-related pathology, as we discuss discussed before, so cardiovascular disease or neoplasia or something like that. So telomeres are super, super important. So looking at some current research that's out there, this was a study of folate metabolism and telomere dynamics um, carried out by Moores and Associates. So basically with this study, the findings were unclear on how folate influences telomere length, which is all the more reason why it needs to be more in-depthly studied and researched since telomeres are super important. Um, this picture right here just shows how many different things can affect telomere length. Um, so we are not exactly sure through current research what exactly affects the telomere length. So through this study, we will only be looking at the effects of folate on telomere length, but it is important to recognize that other factors can contribute to the shortening of telomeres as well. So how does folate and telomere length relate to the average American? Well, this is a really important question because research needs to be carried out that is relevant to today's population. So. Like we talked about before, there are disease processes that are associated with telomere shortening. Um, we talked about heart disease. We talked about cancer. There is inflammatory bowel disease, malignancies, and the list goes on and on. So basically, these are diseases that affect a lot of the population of America. And I'm sure people are really looking to find the cure for them or even better to prevent them. So I think more research needs to be done on this topic in order to fully understand why pathology occurs. Um, also, the big topic in telomere shortening right now, current research found an association between telomere shortening and neurologic diseases such as dementia and Alzheimer's. So right here we have a graph of ages of people with Alzheimer's and dementia. This was taken in 2018, so this year, so super relevant. Um, so it shows one in three sen seniors aged 85 and older have or had an Alzheimer's disease. This is an immense amount of the population. Um, Alzheimer's disease is linked to telomere shortening according to current research. So this is also huge. So the goal of this research is basically to 
evaluate folate levels in vivo, so in living humans, as it relates to the telomere length and associated pathophysiology. Current studies strongly suggest an association between telomere length and aging, providing what some authors would term a biological or mitotic clock. Um, biological or mitotic clock is what I spoke on before, just saying that with each shortening and cell di- with each cell division, the telomere shortens m- more. So there is like kind of like a ticking time bomb for how short can a telomere get before you get a pathology. So molecular psychiatry. This is looking again at Alzheimer's disease and neurological diseases that can be associated with the sh- uh, shortening of telomeres. So um, this is just a representation of known connections between Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, and that's the Lewy bodies. Um, these disorders not only feature dementia as one of their core clinical manifestations, but also share neuropathical alteration, alterations. Um, And this has to do with amyloid plaques that build up within the brain. Um, And that is thought to be associated with the shortening of telomeres. This is just a representation that shows different areas of the brain that are affected through improper methylation. Um, And improper methylation is a combination of homocysteine and folate levels. So as folate levels decrease homocysteine levels will increase and this is not an ideal environment for the body so in green on this image homocysteine levels will increase and that shows the part of the brain in green that is affected by increased homocysteine and in red it shows a decrease of folate this is just a representation of different parts of the cell that improper dna methylation can affect Um, this is just a short sweet chart showing methylation and it's just saying homocysteine is naturally produced in our bodies as a result of methylation it is needed to make glutathione and methathione however it is elevated levels homocysteine that can cause problems so the research question will supplementation of folate prolong shortening of telomeres therefore avoiding age-related pathologies The methods for this study, um, our sample population will be assessed every six months for four years. So once we get our sample size and we give a buccal swab, which we'll discuss in a few slides prior to them beginning the study, the continuation of gathering DNA will continue for four years over the longitudinal study every every single month for six months. I'm sorry, every six months for per year, so two times a year. So the recruitment of the study, studies range from under 100 people to several hundred participants, and that's just looking at research studies that have been done similar to this one. So for this study, it was decided to include 300 total participants, and that means 150 per study arm. So there's a case group and a control group, 150 per each. The reasoning for this sample size is based on a prior study, and it accounts for feasibility of providing four years of supplementation with folate for 300 study participants. It's just to account for potential dropouts and potential Uh, reasons why a participant would not be willing to continue the study over the duration of four years. So this is discussing the buccal swab. Um, The purpose of it is to assess the length of the telomere before the study starts just to provide a baseline measurement of the length and this will be continued every six months to monitor changes in telomere length from the onset. The study based on again previous research that was used on a multivitamin Um, is how we decided or it was decided the study would continue longitudinally for four years. So data analysis will be performed using two separate mean standard deviations calculated via Wilson's rank sum. So our population would be greater than less than 0.05. Telomere length values will be measured from buccal swab DNA through quantitative polymerase chain reaction. So at the end of the study, we want to see if there's a correlation between pathology, telomere length, and folate supplementation. Assessing telomere length changes with regards to one variable of the many causes of telomere length change. Those are my references. Thank you so much for watching.